Cape Cod Technology Council's first Friday for June. Uh, we're thrilled to have yeah. Mike Kelleher here from the Australian International Screen Forum. Uh, he's here all the way from Palm Springs, California, sort of not quite halfway to Australia, but a little ways on the way up. <laughs> and um, uh, just a few housekeeping things before we start. Uh, I'd like to give uh, a shout out uh, to our sponsors, um, uh, Cape Sp <laughs> sorry, not Cape Space, Open Cape uh, Broadband uh, provider here uh, on, in the region. Stephen Smith is here uh, from from, and Steve Tom are here from Open Cape. If you have questions, drop a line for them in the chat. Um, and also uh, Cape and Plymouth Business Media. And Dale Shabijian is here and he always gives us a quick marketing tip uh, when we get started. So Dale, why don't you give us a, a little snippet today? Great, good morning, thank you. Hi everyone, happy Friday. Very excited for today's discussion. And um, today's tip is if you're creating content, visual content for anything, um, a really great program is called Canva. A lot of you may already be using it. They have a free package and a, uh, a pro package. The pro is like $10 a month. And if you haven't used it, they come, it comes with tons of templates. So if you wanna do a Facebook post, it gives you a template and then you can change colors, fonts, pictures, et cetera. But they also have a new feature that is, um, they have a new feature called the content planner. So when you create your graphic right in Canva, you can actually connect to Facebook, Instagram, and I believe LinkedIn, and you can post it right to those channels right from Canva. So it's a really great, easy tool to use. If you've been struggling to find the time to do something like this, they have just cut the time down drastically with this new feature. So that is my tip for today. And, and I, I have to second, it's an Australian company, by the way, Canva, um, and I swear by it. Um, so I have to, uh, can, you know, agree with you there, mate. Awesome. Thank you. Looking forward today to today, Michael. Thanks. Good. Thanks so much, Dale. We appreciate all you do for us. Uh, just a, a quick note on some upcoming events that we have here uh, at, the, at the Tech Council. Um, our coffee Q&A, which is on the third Friday of this month, is with Chief John Burke from the Sandwich Fire Department. Uh, he was recently featured in a, a New York Times article about indoor air quality. And, and so he's going to be talking about uh, some of the technology that he's been using at the fire station uh, for actually tracking uh, particulates uh, in the air. Um, and uh, should be a fun, a fun event. Uh, part of our series on indoor air quality that we started last year. So obviously an important topic in uh, keeping virus loads down in, in, our, in our, our buildings. Uh, for our July 1st Friday, which is actually going to be on the second Friday of the month, so we're not uh, fighting with the holiday, uh, the Massachusetts Life Sciences Center is going to be uh, presenting. And then our coffee Q&A in July, um, I'm excited about this one. I'm excited about all of them, but this one is a, a particularly nerdy. Uh, mm -hmm. is, it's going to be the, uh, the Mayflower uh, Autonomous Ship. So this is a, uh, a ship boat uh, that is built in England, and it is solar powered and autonomous. And they are going to be making, trying to make a cross Atlantic journey with, with this vessel. Uh, you can look it up uh, the, online and it looks like it's going to be really fun. We've got the executive director uh, from that organization with us. And in September, uh, Vince Cerf, Dr. Vince Cerf uh, from Google. Uh, he's a vice president at Google. He's literally one of the founders of the internet, uh, developed uh, the TCIP protocol. And um, he's uh, going to be talking about interplanetary internet, how we send internet signals to other planets like Mars, uh, uh, as well as other things. So it should be a fascinating conversation with him. So hope you can sign up for all those. You can do that right on our website at cctechcouncil.org. And with that, I will turn it over to our moderator today, Robin Morrison from Cape Space. Robin? Uh, yes, good morning, everyone. Thank you, Bert. Um, uh, we'll just add that since the, um, the uh, military is making their report on UFO activity to Congress in June, we'll be very interested to hear what uh, Dr. Cerf has to say about <laughs> interplanetary communication. Um, but, uh, but today we're talking about product, uh, pro product um, management, uh, which includes how somebody comes up with an idea for a digital project, a product and how that product 
gets from idea stage to something that you can actually buy in an app store or um, on uh, uh, any other uh, retail uh, place that sells uh, technology. Great, I'm very articulate this morning, aren't I? All right, need more coffee. All right, Mike, welcome. Thank you. Um, Mike is, uh, for, for uh, everyone's benefit, Mike, is, Mike has a wonderfully long title. He is the executive director of the Australian International Screen Foundation. I get that right, Mike? Yes, that's right. Okay, he is also a former product manager for CNN. Um, and I think a lot of what he's gonna be talking today uh, about today, uh, will cover some of the product management and delivery that he did for CNN. He also happens to be, uh, <clears throat> as a side note, uh, a partner of mine in a venture called PopDesk, um, which is a, an app for booking co-working spaces. And Mike has been the lead product manager on that as well. So, uh, so Mike, welcome. And um, thank you. Hoping that you can uh, start off by telling us a little bit about your background and how you got into uh, what you do. Um, and then and I understand that you've got a, a, a slide deck, so uh, we're ready for you to share. Sure, thanks. Thanks, Robin. And thanks, thanks Bert, uh, for the earlier uh, comments. Um, yeah, I, I also have to have to say as a disclaimer, it's I'm on the West Coast and it's it's seven o'clock in the morning. Uh, and if it's I sound like I've got a a, a toad in my throat, I apologize. Um, it's I'm I'm uh, I'm actually can be a morning person, but my throat uh, is a night person. It seems so. I, I apologize in advance. Um, and thanks. It's great to great to talk to to everybody. Um, uh, it, I should say that you know, as someone who's lived in the United States for 15 years, I still look at the Cape Cod uh, and the Cape Cod area is probably one of my favorite areas. So it's a pleasure to, to meet and talk to everybody um, uh, today. Um, so my background is um, actually ends up being quite typical for the average product manager. Um, I started out um, uh, as a journalist. Um, I worked for the Murdoch organization back in Australia. As we know, Rupert owns pretty much every, every newspaper in Australia, uh, still does, and did when I, when I started. Um, and um, I, I went through a regular <clears throat> process, like an internship and traineeship as a young journalist. Um, and it was around the time of the first dot-com bust. Um, but so in other words, it was early enough in the... Uh, in the evolution of the internet, where you know millennials were still in there, were still at school, um, they were still in their diapers. So I was able to, I think, get exposed to technology and get and exposed to websites because no one else in the organisation wanted to deal with it. So I found myself in a situation as a journalist, being the only one that was willing to put their hand up. This is around 98, 99, to put their hand up and go, you know what, I'm going to find out what HTML is. I'm going to find out what CSS is uh, because nobody else wanted to do it. So I was in a situation where I was, you know, a lot of these newspapers and, and media organizations in the late nineties, I mean, Amazon had just been born. Um, they had websites, but it was mostly brochureware. I mean, I, does everyone, anyone remember that term brochureware? They used to use that term back then. In other words, there, they, there was really nothing on the back end. Um, and, and I found myself really learning on the job. Um, and as, as that role progressed, um, I decided to do more, um, uh, training in that, uh, I went and did a master's degree in technology management. And then by the, you know, mid two thousands, I emerged with, you know, essentially a media background and understanding of technology. I, you know, I'm not an engineer, but I was, I was essentially, um, what was going to become uh, a product manager. Um, and, uh, and I was probably a little bit earlier in the curve. We were still called project managers in the mid two thousands. Um, but really that's how I got into the, into, into the, uh, discipline of product management really by accident. Um, so, which is interesting, but it ends up being quite typical for a lot of product managers. Uh, particularly ones that that were on the east coast of the of the United States, on the west coast of the United States, particularly around mm -hmm. Silicon Valley, a lot of them were engineers, former engineers that um, uh, found themselves into in becoming product managers. Mm -hmm. So 
that's my yeah, I mean, that's a, that's a very you know uh, abbreviated um, explanation of my background. So, but essentially, I, I fell into the fell into the role by um, by accident. So that then, if 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 this is where we want to go next, that then probably begs the question: What is a product manager? Um, good question. That's the perfect place to go. Place to go next. Yeah. So, <laughs> what is a product manager now? Uh, in 2021, I'll be honest with you all, it's still open to interpretation <laughs> for, and, and depending on whether you work in a startup or whether you work in a big organization like Time Warner, and I've, I've worked in both. Um, it depends on whether or not you, you work in Silicon Valley or you work uh, you know, uh, in, in New York City. Um, so it is, it is a long conversation and we've only got an hour <laughs> So, but let me start by saying a product manager is essentially piggy in the middle. Now we all remember that game, piggy in the middle, right? So uh, that is really what the product manager is, is that's its value in, in uh, how uh, digital products, whether they be apps or whether the websites or software that we don't even see, uh, that's really where the product manager sits in the human value chain of, of technology uh, development. What we do is we, uh, uh, another way to describe it is we're essentially also a referee. Um, and, and the reason why referee is uncomfortable in some organizations is, is referee has power. And in some cases, um, the product manager doesn't have any, have any power. Uh, so uh, at its heart, what we do is we take a lot of different inputs. So from technology, and it's usually with technology, it's you know how long it's going to take to do something or a certain, certain uh, bit of software that's needed to do it. We might have in a big organization requests from marketing. We might have a, a request from business. We might have requests from compliance. And the product manager sits in the middle of all those requests, collates them, um, helps everybody prioritize them because that's obviously an issue because everyone's every, everyone thinks their their request is is the most important, um, and then uh, puts it into a into a fashion that can be communicated to a to a uh, development team. So it's a, it's a combination of information gathering, coalescing, getting a consensus, and then and then once the decision is is made. And you have the consensus amongst all the disparate teams. You start to shape the re what's called requirements, uh, and the requirements is what's given to to an engineering team. So, what are requirements? So, requirements are, and this might be obvious to a lot of people. So, I apologise if I'm being too um, rudimentary, but <clears throat> the um, requirements are, um, you know, I mean, back in the old days, we used to have to write these 50, 60 page requirements documents, which included process flows, wireframes. And, and I don't know if, if everybody knows what a wireframe is, but it's almost like a, you know, we've all seen the plan of a house, you know, elevate, uh, what's it called? I'm not, a, I'm not a builder, obviously, but, but a, a, what an architect provides, that's essentially what a wireframe is. Um, then, then there's designs. Um, and then there's um, you 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 take that into into a form that can be communicated to an engineering team, so that can be written written requirements or it can be what's called a user story, um, and I can talk a little bit more about that if if we when we get into the Q and A, what is a user story and what is agile, um, but uh, that is that is then what's given to engineers and then they pass out all the tasks and then. The, the coders go and build what needs to be built. Uh, and then we get to a point where it's, um, it's uh, you know, ready to uh, for QA. So it's been tested and then it goes back to the same people, depending on who's got um, the authority to approve it. Right. So, so I would, I would um, have to, um, you know, I'd get a piece of software, I would get an app, I would have to go back to the same people to that same consensus group and then so okay is this what you envisage is this okay is this okay is this okay and this is really not fun by the way <laughs> having to do particularly at a big organization like cnn um and i've worked at you know some of the biggest 
media organizations in New York and with a lot of egos. Um, so uh, I would I would probably say that that is the the greatest challenge. You need to be a peacemaker to be a product manager. Um, so Mike, and then um, and, so Mike, it sounds yeah. like a, a lot of your job really um, is your. Um, you're almost like an interpreter, right? Because you're the only person in this, there's, there are all these different specialists that need to contribute to this project, but you're the only one who speaks the, lang this, the language of all of them, right? You're the only one that can take all that information and turn it into something that reflects everybody's needs. Is that right? Yes, yes, it's, <laughs> it's that, that, that's right. And, and you, you have to um, be able to uh, speak the language of all those individual constituencies in order to have credibility with them so that mm -hmm. you can move them in the direction that you feel they need to because it's not really it's not really a I mean you, you could be a power hungry product manager and and there are and there is the C product CEO model which I'm, I'm, I'll talk about too which I actually think is is probably um, ideal in, in big organizations but but um, you, you you really you have to uh, move everybody in, in a direction that yeah, you, you have to you have to exercise judgment and understand um, you know really what is the, what is the priority and and that's and that's that's the thing that I think is 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 the challenge. But another in a lot another, of ways, it's classic responsibility without authority. Yeah, and 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 that expression has been you like when people complain about the role and and when they have their you know uh, exit interviews when they leave from being product, a lot of people a lot of people say that's the that's the problem with with product manager, and I think it's and and Robin, a lot of that's come from the fact that product management has evolved from project management. And and Robin, I distinctly remember you asking me this question two years ago: What's the difference between project and product? And we had that conversation, and and it was and and that's why because product product management is a very different discipline than project management. Project management is managing task lists. Um, that's not what a, a product manager does. Um, it can be what a product manager does, but it's certainly not 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 what I do. I mean, the ideal product manager is is one that um, understands the the goals of the technology. So, so looking at um, PopDesk as an example, right? So Robin mentioned that before. So what's the goal of that? Well, the goal it has near term goals. And it has long-term goals. Uh, they're pretty much the same at the moment, uh, and that is transactions through the app. So customer acquisition, so getting customers and keeping customers, that's the goal, right? So when I go and talk to all, and PopDesk doesn't really have this, but well, it kind of does, doesn't it, Robin? Um, you know, when I go and talk to marketing, when I go and talk to the founder, when I talk to the investors, I need to make sure that we're all talking, we're all focused on that. So, so it's really about making the team understand the goal. Uh, now at CNN, we were launching a new product and I'll take everybody through, through <clears throat> that product. It was kind of similar. So it was, it was you know, getting eyeballs and keeping eyeballs. Um, so when somebody comes up with, with um, uh, I forget what it was, but, but if, if, if somebody from marketing comes up with a, uh, an idea, particularly an idea that needs to be built by an engineer, and that doesn't align with the goal, I have to push back hard. I have to say, you know, uh, and if I don't have the authority, I need to I need to get the other constituencies to support me. So it's a little bit like being, I, I'm not great with American politics, like the whip in, in parliament, in, you know, you're the one that has to get everybody else on the team to agree that you're gonna back this legislation. Um, so I think I think that there's that part of it too. So so basically, it's um, I think I think the ideal product manager is somebody that's either the CEO of a product, and we can talk about what that means, um, or they're or they're the voice of the customer. And the voice of the customer is if if a product manager is given the remit where they're responsible for the customer, that takes that's you get that's all the power you need. Because the customer's king, and if you can always if you can always walk into a meeting, and I used to, used to do this sometimes in other jobs, if you can walk into a meeting and say, "Well, the customer wants this," everybody listens to you. <laughs> everybody listens to you, because that's why we're here. You know, we're all here to 
to serve the customer and to whatever our business goals is. So, yeah, it's it's um, it's when it's ill defined, the the role doesn't work. Um, so uh, so yeah, uh, I don't know if anyone has any questions to jump, please jump in. Um, I'm I'm happy to to talk as as we go. Um, another thing uh, before I get into the uh, slide uh, show. Another thing to talk about briefly is, uh, if it's relevant, is um, <clears throat> uh, companies uh, have different uh, methods in how they, how they fill this role. Um, and let's talk about Facebook for, for, for an example. Um, Facebook for, the, for probably the 10, you know, 10 years that it's been around, um, you know, year 10, uh, it was only hiring former engineers as product managers, so former coders as product managers. Then, you know, uh, by about the you know eight eight or nine years ago, they realised that. Uh, and no offence to any software engineers on this call, but but they realised that um, you know, uh, engineer former engineers as product managers has its limits, and the limits are an inability. And this is a general statement. I, I'm obviously over apologising before I say this. Um, have 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 uh, an inability to, or a limited ability to to coalesce large groups of people, um, and and reach a consensus. Um, and I mean, I, I actually work in the film industry, and and uh, when I'm not working technology and <clears throat> software uh, coders, remind me of screenwriters. You know, basically, they're they you know they're brilliant, but they're not great on dealing with lots of different disparate people. Um, you know, which which is why a producer and a director. Again, I know that's a generalization. I'm sure there are people on this call that accept into that, uh, but uh, that's why Facebook decided to hire people that um, are like me, generalists. Um, I mean, I know HTML and CSS, but I'm, and actually I know a little bit of, a little bit of uh, PHP, although I've forgotten. Um, but um, for the most part, I'm not a, I'm, I, you know, I'm, I'm not a coder. Um, and so they hired people that had that ability to coalesce. Um, and, uh, and I think a lot of tech companies on the West Coast particularly have started to do that more and more of experimented with it. Google doesn't. Google is still very much hardcore, you know, engineering um, background. Uh, I haven't. I've never even tried to work at Google. Um, so it, yeah, it, look, it's 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 interesting um, how the product role has evolved over the years. Um, but um, but I do think it's. I do think we used to say five years ago that you know come. 2020, 2021, the industry would have figured out what product management is. Um, and then when we walk into an interview in, you know, on, on, in New York, New York particularly, because it's a media town, <clears throat> when we walk into uh, an interview in New York, they're going to know what the HR person is going to know who they're, what they're hiring for. Um, and unfortunately, that's not the case. Uh, and, uh, you know, I don't know if it's going to change anytime soon. So, uh, so yeah, I don't know. Is it Robin? Is there any questions we want to take? Robin, are you, are you on mute? So sorry, Robin, you're on mute. Uh, I was muted. Um, yeah. So um, I think we can jump over to your slides in a sec. But I uh, just wanted to make a comment here that you know what you're describing. Um, that that's got to be a really difficult skill set to to find all the things that you're describing in one person, right? Um, and we have uh, we've actually had speakers here at the Tech Council that have talked about a thing called the skills gap, which is uh, basically the concept that there are you know hundreds of thousands of unfilled tech jobs uh, in in the country and the world uh, because there just aren't enough uh, you know it's just isn't enough talent out there yeah. to, to fill the need. And and I would I would have to guess that uh, this would be one of the most difficult areas to fill roles. It's a really important role, but it's a role that requires a really interesting collection of skills that I don't think most people uh, acquire um, in, in the normal course of their career. 
Is that correct? yeah? I, that's that that's that's exactly right. And and it's it's um uh, it's a reason why I mean product man. I you know I I get calls from a recruiter every other day. You know, so so the skill is 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 growing, particularly as the need for the skill is growing, particularly as the workforce ages. Um, and because the, because we've got people that have grown up, you know, if if they're if they're you know without all this generational segments, which is which is sometimes disingenuous, but you know, you've got boomers, you've got Gen Xs, you've got so some people have grown up um, uh, being multitaskers. Millennials. This is big. I'm talking big organisations now. I'm not talking startups or whatever. So you know, we've got millennials and and what's the one under millennial Y or something? I forget. But you've got all those Gen X have, and then Y. Yeah, that have grown up multitasks, multitaskers in the work. They're happy to do, you know, what they need to do. Even Gen Xs can be, you know, grown up with certainly the you know the tail end of the internet. But it's the it's the old. The, Probably not anyone on this call, by the way, but it's the it's the it's the older people that kind of want to keep just doing what they do in their job. Um, they don't want to retire anytime soon. They're too young to retire. But in those roles, a product manager is really essential because he or she has to liaise with those people and get a sense of what they want from a technology standpoint and bring that over. Now, if if you're dealing with people that are more familiar with the internet. More familiar with technology, more familiar with 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 you know, broadening their uh, work responsibilities throughout the day. A product manager actually is is less useful. Um, again, it depends on the organisation, but yeah, you're, what you're really doing is your your um, you know coaxing technical requirements out of people sometimes, um, and then because because often people don't know what they want. That's another thing in technology that, that you know they don't they don't know what they want. So yeah, it's it's um it's a really growing uh, skill. Uh, a lot of jobs, pays of you know salaries have gone up considerably for this role. So yeah, it, we're certainly not we're not obsolete yet. Um, <laughs> so um, all right, so we're at ten thirty. So why don't we jump over to your? I understand you have a case study to to take us through. Yeah, yeah. Um, so. I got to, oh, what do I got to do? I got to, hang on. Sorry. I'm, I forgot. I've got to uh, share my screen, right? Can, can everyone see? Yes. Okay, great. Bear with me, everybody. Okay, can everybody see this? Yes. Great. So, um, this was the last corporate uh, product job I did. Was working for, for CNN, um, uh, Turner Turner Broadcasting, um, before, and I I met Robin and and ended up um, getting involved in PopDesk. Um, so C CNN MoneyStream was um, an idea that came out of uh, the kind of the, the, an incubator within CNN, like a startup incubator within CNN. And that's why they hired me. And, um, so the idea around it was the fact that, um, and, and I'm being deliberate in how I'm explaining this, right. Um, the problem with CNN and particularly CNN business was, uh, it was an aging demographic. We didn't have young people, uh, we were not getting traffic through social um, and so we needed to figure out a way in which we could bring at least the CNN business um, uh, brand uh, younger. And so we got together and designed an app that was supposed to speak to that, that generation. So aging demographic, needed an emerging age demographic. Um, and so they wanted us to create a product experience for CNN content that would reflect those target users. Um, and we came up with with CNN MoneyStream app, both on iOS and Android. Um, and what I'm about to show you is actually, I think it was a year into launch. Um, and then, uh, and this is another thing, particularly, you know, this was, this was during um, 
the 2016, 2016 election year, by the way. So, so, you know, I was having to try and get budget from my CNN superiors at the time where, you know, we had a, a complete circus going on in American politics. Um, so it was a pretty tough, tough time to be, to be launched, launching this, but this is actually, this is when I had to, to sell this product internally. So what you're about to see is when we had to go and resell it to get more money. Um, and to do that, um, I, uh, obviously we needed to have a budget. Um, and then I, I had, uh, stakeholders that I needed to pitch to. And so I think this slide deck, went to it went to a marketing department it went to pr it went to jeff zucker you know the head of cnn it went to advertising it, it went to tech uh it went to editorial uh so you know you, you can in, in me understanding you can kind of, you can kind of get a sense of what product does um so basically um uh, this is what a product person person does and this is the end result of all those conversations right so i'm presenting it back so the mission of, of cnn money stream was was money news for tomorrow's consumer financial knowledge on the go for the next generation um i had to come up with our target audience and there's a lot of research behind this um uh, mobile mobile first younger, uh, younger demographic 18 to 34 interested in snackable content so social content um, and then custom custom content is really important, much in the same way that a person's Facebook feed or Instagram feed or Snapchat or, or whatever is, TikTok is. is and, and this was before TikTok, by the way. It was still, I think it was called Musical.ly back then. So this is, a, this is like three years ago, four years ago. Um, and then from that, we, uh, uh, so we, we had, sorry, we had the target audience. We had to figure out the target audience. Uh, and then we, of course, we had to demonstrate the vision um and again this is all all the stuff that product person does um communicate certainly communicating that vision and for money stream it was adding a stronger voice opening channels to listen to our audience um and and obviously you know uh, everything is supposed to meet whatever the goals are uh to achieve uh user growth um uh and and then, and then I also had, I, I demonstrated the features. I've got to be careful here. I don't want to look like I'm, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to, trying to, um, I, I feel like I've gone back into my product management mode of, um, you're all members of, of the finance committee and I'm, and I'm uh, trying to present it. So I'm not, I'm, I'm just trying to show everybody here that obviously how, how it, how it all works. Uh, but I don't want to uh, present money stream to everybody again, because this, this app is no longer around. Um, so, um, you know, obviously we have things like, uh, what do we want in the, in the near term? Um, and these, the, for example, these are things that need to be added uh, so that we can reach our goals. Uh, this, is, this is just for anybody that's new to the company, reminding people what, what MoneyStream is. Um, uh, you know, because like I said, people, people tend to forget or have short-term memory, particularly in an election year um medium term uh, that's really important because you've got to give people an idea of what we can do in the short term what we can do in the medium term um and then uh and you know as you can see that's you know all that sort of stuff is you know the medium term list is probably long it's it, it's actually longer than than what and 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 just 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 so everybody can understand um basically all, all these all these points and even the ones earlier come from all those conversations all the conversations with all the constituencies. So it's really like creating a massive shopping list. And, and near term is obviously higher priority, medium term is, is either lesser priority or it's, it, it takes more development time to do. Um, and long term is definitely about development time. So, um, and the reason why, so multi-platform, and I'm sure everybody knows what that is, you know, the idea was for the CMS for, for MoneyStream was supposed to essentially become the CMS for all of Turner. Um, and the reason why this didn't happen is because AT&T bought us and um, when that happens in those big companies, everything shuts down, at least until the acquisition uh, is complete. So that's what happened to MoneyStream. Um, again, multi-platform, long-term. Um, and then this, this is obviously, um, this is very important at CNN. So essentially we were moving 
the CNN Money Core, CNN Business Core 34 plus to, um, to a younger demographic. Um, and and this, is a, this is a great example of how a product manager works. So we've all seen Venn diagrams too. That's another one that we use a lot. Um, you know, product and product decisions are often the, in the middle of the Venn diagram. And this is, this is really, this is, so you'll see, you'll see um, both, both the left and the right are uh, obviously target audiences moving from one target audience to the other. What you're seeing in the middle, real-time market data, calculators, tools, and quizzes is essentially the technology products that we're going to use to get there, you know, and that's, that's where, you know, that's where product sits in terms of I would lead the uh, creation and development and management of all of those tools in addition to the app. Um, so that's an example. That's, that's basically seeing what, that's seeing what a product manager does, does in action. Um, and I think that's it actually. Um, so I, I'm, I feel like I'm talking too much. Uh, so um, I will, uh, hang on, stop share. Uh, so I don't know if I want to open it up to, to the floor, Robin, what do you think? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and let me start with some questions of my own. Uh, all right, so uh, so curious, um, you know, what, uh, I know what uh, near term, medium term, long term mean in, you know, my world. Uh, I'm guessing maybe they mean something different in the tech world. So what what's long term? Long term like next week? <laughs> no, it's it's well. No, that's a really good question because long term in 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 technology uh, is not really long term. <laughs> it's it's like it's. I would say, what are we now? We're in June now. Uh, I would say long term would be later in the year, early next year. Um, we mostly we mostly work. Uh, you know, me, I always think, you know, short term and medium term is pretty much the same thing. Um, and that's a bit, but it all comes down to, because I remember something about technology and everybody knows this. Technology is easy to quantify because it's a human, most of the time, it's, a, it's, it's how, how long it takes the human to do a task or humans to do a task. Now that engineer can take, or that designer can take three hours, they can take 30 days you can have 100 engineers and it's going to take less days um so that's so in other words if it's a complex uh technology requirement so a complex app complex back end comp you know disparate front ends um that's going to take longer so that's a that's a medium term now there's another thing um and i, I actually prefer lean development um, lean development is what's called build, measure, learn. So it's where you're always operating. You know the long term, but you're always operating in the short term. So you you um, uh, make quick, quick, quick delivery. Um, make sure you have uh, analytics in place to learn from it. Um, then you learn from it, and then you make tweaks. And you so you it's it's called. I'm sure a lot of people know it's continuous innovation, continuous deployment. That's it. Continuous deployment. Um, you probably heard the fact Zuckerberg's talked okay. about this. You know, he talks about build, measure, learn, uh, but he also talks about always be always be shipping and break things. Probably remember you probably might remember, you know, Zuckerberg used to say break things, and that's the build that's the build, measure, learn thing. You learn when you break things. <laughs> okay, I like writing that down. I I, um, I, I I just saw a question about agile. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. De development. So agile, I actually was exposed to Agile very early on. So I was exposed to Agile in, in 2009. Um, and I was really lucky that I had that experience. I was at Reuters working on a short-term gig uh, to launch a video platform. Um, and we used hardcore Agile. So we had two week sprints, um, user stories, and a user story um, is uh, essentially as a product manager, I want to be able to um, log into an app with just my email address and password. That's it. That's a requirement. So, and then an engineer will go and do that. So that's pretty quick, right? That's pretty. So before that, I would have to write process flows and 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 wireframes. And so, I love Agile. Um, and, but the problem with agile and big organizations 
is you you know everybody all the stakeholders need to be comfortable with seeing stuff that's not necessarily either perfect or exactly what they want um and so it does create some some issues but i'm i i prefer to work in in fact popdesk is is agile robin i don't know if you if you know that it's we, we operate ag, a, 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 agile so um yeah I i'm a proponent have, of that. i know that i've heard you and bima talking yeah. about your sprints yes um, <laughs> We've got a uh, question here from Ellen. Ellen, I'm going to ask you to unmute yourself and ask your question about product management and product marketing. Yeah, sure. I was just wondering if you could talk about, about that difference between product management and product marketing. Um, I, when I was in working in tech companies as a Mar Marcoms person, it always seemed to me to be a really fine line between, and the, those two roles really worked hand in hand. Can you talk about that a little bit? Yeah, so so it really just comes down to whether or not that's um, part of your job description, or whether that's a that's a a constituency that you're responsible for. Um, so so when you build a product team, depending on how much budget you have, you will have this product director. Then you would have either a product manager. It's it's really a generalist versus versus a specialist kind of role. Um, Think, think of, of, of the medical, a, a doctor. You've got an, what is it? An internist? We call them GPs in Australia, general practice, and then you've got a specialist, um, a dermatologist. It's kind of the same thing. Um, so it is a fine line because often in some companies, the product manager will deal with marketing. I actually don't agree with that. I think it's always better to have somebody that, even if they're not technical, that they're responsible for, for the marketing goals. Because marketing... As we all know, um, marketing is, um, you know, obviously there's brand marketing and then there's transactional marketing and it's always good to kind of just have somebody because it's quite, it's quite a discipline in, its, in, you know, in itself. Um, but it is complimentary because it's a great question because it is complimentary because, you, you, you know, marketing is being user focused. Product management, when it works, is being user focused. So they go hand in hand in the discipline, but I don't know if they necessarily should be should be the purview of one person. But that's just my opinion. Um, Does that, that help? Question, Ellen. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and that's exactly been was my experience. The product manager was the real technical person who was dealing more directly with the developers. Yeah. Um, and as a Marcom person, I was dealing mostly with the product marketing person who would come to me and say, yeah, these are our goals, or he would, uh, he or she would have defined the target audience. Yeah. Um, and would come to me and say, these are the people we're trying to reach. And this is, you know, this is what I propose. This is, you know, we, we would work together more closely than I yeah. would with the product manager per se. Yeah, ex ex exactly. Now, that reminds me, the fastest growing special, specialized discipline in product now is data analytics. So if you're a product manager that, that, that loves numbers and, and, and loves looking in, you know, data sets and log, log, what is it? Log files or whatever. Um, you, um, you know, you're never going to be without a job. Let me put it that way. Um, Mike, could you talk a little bit about um, where does the product manager, when does the product manager get freed from the product or do you stay with it to the end? So, it gets launched, um, you know, maybe it gets launched in a, uh, you know, MVP state and goes through a few iterations. Um, but is there, is, is there come a time when you move on to something else or you, are you staying with that project for an indefinite amount of time? I, I think, I think if, if you're, if you're doing continuous deployment, you kind of have to be, um, you know, you might be in a big company, you might be taken off that responsibility because they want you on something else. Um, but the only time, the only time that ever happens, I found is if things like, if it's, if it's like an admin, if it's a backend tool or something that's not customer facing, I mean, I've always worked in, in media companies. So I, you know, I, I deal with customer, you, you know, user, user facing products essentially. But if it's, if it's something like a, you know, a new CMS content management system, then yeah, it, it might it might be taken taken off my uh, task list, and uh, an engineer might might run it, or that we could have a 
I mean, God, we don't have enough time to talk about this, but, but um, you know, a program manager could, could take over that. Um, and don't ask, me, don't ask me to explain what a program manager is, because I don't know. And so, uh, so, you know, I run a lot of applications for my business. And, um, you know, when I call up one of my uh, vendors and say, you know, are you ever going to make this thing, uh, I don't know, uh, uh, release a version that works on Apple Watch, for example, yeah. something like that. And they say, that's in development. There's always yeah. things in development. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, is, is that development list the purview of the product manager? Yeah. And on our, I reckon it'd be fun sometime if you just would say to them, okay, show me. Show me in development. Show me. Because somewhere there is a project management tool that should, that should say what they're working on. So they, do that. that. That'll scare them. <laughs> Um, so, so yes, I mean, that is, if something's in development that should flow, flow to a product manager that's responsible for that development. Um, and, and, you know, and, and different, and that's actually, your questions are great, Robin, um, because it's, because if it's another version of the product like that, maybe the, maybe, maybe the, like, like for, for, like what, what happens a lot with mobile apps is there'll be a requirement that says, okay, there's a new iPhone coming out. Uh, we've got to redo the app. Um, and that's actually something the product manager probably doesn't need to be involved in um, because it's not a really good use of time. It's not that new. It's not that different. I don't usually have to coalesce a lot of different teams in order to sign off on that. Um, so yeah, but when, when they say that it's in development, uh, most of the time there's a product manager that's attached to it. Um, and, and what are those, uh, you just mentioned um, some project management tools that you would be using. Oh, could you just talk about what some of those might be like Microsoft yeah, there's a, Project, the, is that, that what you the, mean? There's a, uh, yeah, yeah, that's, the, the, there's, there's a lot. Um, what are the I, popular ones? What, what do you like? Well, I, um, I started, uh, like I said, so say, say for the last 12 years, I've been very comfortable in agile and agile methods. And then, and the number one tool, well, back then it was rally this, this, well, I don't know if it was number one uh, and rally was awesome. Uh, I don't know what, what became of it, but uh, about seven or eight years ago, probably even longer, people started using Jira uh, by a company called Atlassian, um, which is an Australian company. Um, and, uh, and that's what we, that's what I've been using really ever, ever since, um, I, for some small stuff, I've used Trello, um, Trello is good, uh, for non-technical stakeholders, because I would have to say you brought up, um, a num a, a, a significant problem with product management. And that is non, a lot of, a lot, a lot of departments, um, won't read things. They won't look at documentation. They won't go to project management or product management kind of um, lists and look at what's being worked on. So you literally have to get out of your desk, uh, get up from your desk every day and go and talk to the head of marketing. Did you see this? We're working on this next. So, um, you know, that, that's, that's, a, that's a perennial problem. But to answer your question, question sorry jira is probably the one that i that, that i use and pretty much everybody uses and i reckon a few people on this call would would, would use it too so we have been uh talking in the context of working in a large organization like a cnn um so can you just talk a little bit about more of like the pop desk scenario where you have a you know, a, a couple of individuals who, you know, have an idea for a product that they want to bring to market. Um, they don't know where to begin. Um, in our case, Matt and I got lucky because we uh, knew Tom and uh, Tom knew you. And so we were actually able to find our product manager very easily. But what 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 does a normal what does an entrepreneur do <laughs> if they want they, well, they don't have this skill themselves um, and you know there isn't like an easy pool of of you know people who are product managers for them to go to and say help me bring my product to market yeah well I mean it's it it, it kind of depends I mean let's look at let's look at at Matt and and you and Matt as the non technical co founders model right so that with the non technical co founder model. The next person you bring in 
is either somebody like me or an engineer. We, you know, with PopDesk, you and Matt decided to bring on some, someone like me. So I couldn't build PopDesk. What I could do was come up with the plans and the architecture to give it to an engineer to do. Um, so that's really, you know, any startup needs that. Um, or they need the engineer or they need both. I think it's, it's good to have, it's good to have both. I mean, PopDesk is such a simple product um, that, uh, I mean, we would have been fine if it was an engineer, you know, that, that it, you know what I mean? Like if, if it wasn't me that came in, an engineer came in, but you know, it, history, history is, is, uh, was otherwise, but, but uh, so, so I think in those situations, it's all very similar, but you have less cooks in the kitchen um, and less money <laughs> and less, and less money until you get, until you, until you raise uh, yeah. money. But, we definitely but, but, had less money. <laughs> yes, but, okay. but it's pretty much, it's pretty much the same thing. Just imagine a smaller team um, and you can move a lot faster. Okay. Uh, all right. It looks like we've got one more audience question coming in. I think then we're going to wrap it up. So, uh, Brian, would you uh, like to unmute yourself and ask your question? Sure. This might actually be a complex question, but you talked a little earlier about continuous delivery, and I'm just thinking more about continuous improvement. And uh, how do you test that a product is successful? Is it objective metrics? Is it observing for innovation and uses that maybe you didn't intend when you started. So I'm just curious as to what your thoughts are about uh, continuous improvement and, uh, and yeah. testing for success. No, no that's, that's, um, that's really the heart of, of, of the uh, build, measure, learn, um, which, is another, which is another way of, of, of continuous improvement, um, which is another way of, of saying it. You've got to have the right tools and uh, you probably didn't see uh, in because I was going through it so quickly, but in that in that slide show, there was a there was a page that was pretty much dedicated to a lot of the analytics tools that that are needed. So um, it's important that you have um, the success metrics built into your process. That can be a third party tool, or it could be something that's done custom. Because my job, my argument, my power as a product manager is through data. And particularly with continuous innovation um, and continuous improvement, I need to be able to, to have, you know, again, I'm like a trial lawyer. I need to have a law, I need to have a, a you know, a precedent or a legal ru ruling in my back, you know, in my argument in order for the, to sway the judge. It's the same thing. Okay, Mike, do you have any final thoughts before I send us back to Bert? No, I, I, I would like to say that we've, um, like I said earlier, we've arrived at a consensus as what the discipline is across the working world. We have not. <laughs> but, uh, you know, I, I think it's, it's definitely something that uh, uh, is a really useful role. And, and I hope uh, everybody here today understands a little bit better. Um, and, and Robin can, if anyone wants to reach out to me directly with any questions or whatever, Robin or Bert will have my contact details. I'm always uh, glad to help. Great. Well, thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for getting up so early on the West Coast to be here. Uh, we appreciate it. Um, no all right, Bert, pleasure. you want to take us out? Robin, thank you so much. Mike, that was fascinating. Um, I actually can't wait to watch the video back because there was so much information there. Um, for right. those of you uh, who are on this, uh, I'll send a follow-up email probably on Monday that will have a link to the video. If it's okay with Mike, I'll include your contact information. Yep, please. And, and so that you can have some of that uh, information available to you. Um, so great, Mike. Thanks so much. Uh, very much appreciated. Thank you. Thank you for pleasure. your moderation skills. And thanks to all of you for being here today. Uh, it's great to have you here on a cloudy Friday here on Cape Cod. And we'll see you at the next event. Hopefully you'll sign up for our uh, coffee Q&A with uh, Chief John Burke in two weeks. So thank you all. Have a great day. Thanks all. Thanks everyone.